Hey guys! God, I'm ginger. <laughs> wow. Okay, anyway. Hey guys, I hope you're well. Um, today's video is called Tips for Getting Through Chemo. I wrote a little list. Um, I've had a few of you guys actually email me and tell me that you know somebody or you yourself personally are going through similar struggles and after my aunt has just recently started going on chemotherapy um, it was very important and very special to me to try and share the experience um, you know comparing tips and tricks as to what helped us through it and um, there was a few lines that I could draw that were common between us and there was a few things that were different but either way I think I sort of have come to a good understanding as well as speaking with you guys as to the things that are typically the same so hopefully I can give you some advice um, so that you yourself can get through chemo it's possible I'm alive look at me woohoo um, and or you can help someone going through it okay so let's get down to it I've got a few categories here um, the first one is food all right currently today I'm having a very bad chemo day. I'm on the fifth day of my chemo and I literally cannot even be inside, which is why I'm filming outside. So they all call me like a super, super woman because I have super smell and not in a good way. <laughs> First thing I would say is put everything in glass or ceramic, which has no taste. Also avoid silicon. I can taste when food has been in silicon and I can taste when food has been in hasn't been covered in the fridge I know it sounds very pedantic and very specific but if you just become so sensitive on chemo heads up for that for you and the next tip is smoothies this is the only way people can get food into me today an especially bad day this is the only thing I can eat I tried having my usual like breakfast muesli and soy milk I couldn't have it um, I tried having just a simple fruit, too intense, can't have it, and I didn't have the energy to make myself anything else, and that's the problem is I get stuck in this cycle where I misinterpret hunger for nausea. My dad very kindly made me a smoothie. This is a uh, peach smoothie with soy milk, and it's a very simple flavor. I lose so much weight because of the chemo. I lose about five kilos, I'm literally in a battle with my body that we actually add like supplements of protein to make sure that we fatten me up. That's why I had this hashtag on Instagram of like hashtag fatten Josephine up. But sometimes it just doesn't happen and you can't force it. Like right now I'm particularly underweight and so I'm working hard to fix that. So yeah, keep an eye on your weight because I can slip really easily. So that's food. Um, yeah, like straight flavors, fruits. Make sure you have just like plain fruits and plain vegetables. Really difficult to have like complex spicy. You really have to ask them to dig deep and ask what their body feels like. On the same hand though, and again this is just, it's very, it's very complex. But for me, I find it when I'm super nauseous, incredibly difficult to talk about food. And my, my dad took me to the grocery store the other day and I had to like walk out because there's just too many smells and flavors and scents and it just made me really nauseous. So keep it simple, stupid, and uh, you'll be okay. You'll be all right. You'll make it. All right, so then drink, same thing. I can't have any drink in any bottles. My stainless steel Patagonia. I can taste the metal. <laughs> and chemo, funnily enough, tastes like metal. Always, I'll have like a big, glass lemon water or mint water or ginger combats nausea oh yeah tea and then it helps calm my stomach when it's feeling really nauseous and it stops it from reflexing because there's something in it but it wasn't food and it doesn't have a strong enough flavor to overwhelm me i choose a very subtle stomach calming chamomile kind of tea and i'll literally have like 30 cups a day i'm like constantly refilling my cup um so that's a really good that really helped me um, I feel like this is a good point to just sort of have a little intermission and explain to you what it actually feels like to go through chemo. So for me, what, the way that I describe it to people is that, you know when you're having uh, your blood drawn and they're taking out a lot of blood, <laughs> it's like pulling through your veins and it's like your fingers start to hurt. It's like an internal hurt, it's like someone's like pulling and it's like an ache. It feels like that all over my body right now, which is incredibly frustrating. 
and every time that I move or I do exercise it's like you know how when you exercise lactic acid is excreted in your muscles and then your blood will like wash it away and it's like that burn stays for like many 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 seconds longer and it lingers and therefore it makes it difficult for you to do exercise um, so that's what the sensation overall feels like also um, I get this thing called chemo brain which is sort of when my mind goes a goobly gobbly like for example now I'm not as articulate as I would be if I was not going through my very intense chemo period as I'm taking the drug um, and that's all of this is okay it's normal um, but it's good to just be aware of it I've broken three glasses and my favorite mug um, in the past like week <laughs> I'm actually very shaky and overestimate my strength and end up breaking things <laughs> so um, yeah that's just you know another tip is just be aware that you're not your normal self and um, sometimes you don't want to overshoot things if you're like balancing a cup on your laptop as you're taking your stuff upstairs um, maybe don't <laughs> maybe just play it safe um, so then hair I am very lucky that I got to keep all of my hair I only lost this much hair and that was because of radiotherapy oh look it's all growing back cute um, see all the way back here I don't know if I'm showing you but I'm doing um, but yeah I lost all of that my scar my scar from the surgery is like that and comes down here but it's all hidden so nicely that I can't see it anymore anyway I'm very lucky. <laughs> this is not normal. Uh, there's a girl who was going through the exact same treatment as I was. She lost all of her hair and we were about the same age. So um, I really can't give you any guarantees there. The doctors told me I was going to lose my hair. I think loss of hair for women and men going through chemotherapy is definitely one of the hardest parts because it's like the real physical manifestation of what you're going through. And um, I think definitely it's something to be proud of like I proudly pin up my hair like this often and wear it out it used to really bother me I used to hide it all the time but then you know we're all kind of millennials and this looks a bit like an undercut and like I don't know people do such weird shit nowadays that like frankly I just really blend in after a while like I thought everybody was looking at me and then I kind of realized no one really cares um, so whether it's like patchy bits like me or whether you lose all of your hair, just own it. I know it sounds really awful, but <laughs> and that's probably one of the largest challenges you'll have to rise to, is just to kind of get over it and live your life and, and be proud of it. Definitely your head gets cold sometimes, so you might want to cover your hair with like a baseball cap, or if you have a wig you want, or a scarf. Protect your head from the sun. You're very susceptible to sunburn when you're on chemo, which is why I'm wearing like long sleeves and I'm under this. You're going through a battle and people just need to understand that. And just, yeah. I would suggest that before you start to lose your hair, um, some people suggested to me that I should cut my hair like an inch a day. Um, so that way it wouldn't be such a shock when I lost all of my hair. But uh, there is no harm in getting a cute wig. So this is my wig. I named it Jasmine because I feel like I look like a bit of a prostitute and I want to be a prostitute named Jasmine. No, but um, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I hated this. I hated this when I first got it because I really thought it was going to be me. But um, I started wearing it out because I wanted to get used to it. I feel like I have a bit of a different personality when I wear Jasmine. And there's so many tips and tricks on how to really make it look real. There's like girls who shave their whole heads bald because they love wigs so much. Um, so definitely look at it as an opportunity. Guys too, if you want to look like Jasmine, you can. The, the Swiss government, I live in Switzerland, actually pays for. They donate to you a proper full human hair wig um, if you have cancer. So I had that option. I went to a, these lovely wig makers. Um, it's called a perruque <laughs> in French and they showed me how they could recreate my hair exactly and they the guy the guy was like I will sew in strands of like red and everything just to make it exactly like your hair 
and it was very difficult for me. I was crying a lot whilst I was there, but they were so kind and so sweet. Um, but in the end, they didn't have to make it for me because there's lots of charities who will, you know, the Princess Trust. <laughs> I was gonna cut all my hair off before all this happened and donate it to the Princess Trust from the bottom of my heart. The hardest thing for me was trying to adjust to the fact that I was gonna lose all my hair. And more than going through chemo, literally almost more than the surgery, that upset me so much because I've always had such long hair and it's such a crucial part of my identity that do not at all beat yourself up or belittle the importance of you know losing your hair. People would tell me, they'd be like, oh, it'll grow back. And it's like, you don't understand. I understand. Wigs, great option. Goodbye, Jasmine. Thanks for now. Oh my God, I'm a ginger again. <laughs> oh yeah, sun. You're very susceptible to the sun. So cover up your arms, your hat. Chemo whilst I was in Bali and I was surfing and I sunburnt my butt so much that on the five hour flight on the way back, I literally couldn't sit. It was so unbearably painful. You are very susceptible to sunburn, 10 times more than you think you are. So just be really careful. Okay, I think the next part is the most important part. And this is honestly how I've gotten through chemo, radio, brain surgery, <laughs> distraction. I should write a book on distraction. I know exactly what distracts myself. I know how to grip my own attention. And so I planned stuff to fully distract me before and after and during everything. So I'll give you a few examples. Before my brain surgery, um, I went up to Big Sur. We did like, a huge road trip and had an amazing time and went on crazy hikes. And then after my surgery, two days after my surgery, I was um, discharged from hospital, went to the beach to go surfing with my boyfriend in San Francisco. And that was fun. And then, not me, I sat and watched him. But still, I was at the beach, you know, like doing stuff. Then we were going for hikes. And on another crazy freaking hike. So do you see the, the gist here? Just absolutely keeping yourself so exhausted that by the time your head hits the pillow in the end of the day, you are like so out. And there's no time for you to sit and whinge and moan or feel the pain because you're so distracted. Um, I think another thing was like having my whole family there was great because my brother was there and I could joke around and have fun with him. Uh, you know, like my parents were there so I could really lean on them to support me. Um, and actually my boyfriend flew out from Hawaii to San Francisco to be there for me for my brain surgery. Um, which is, I know this video is about chemotherapy, but it's kind of like all the same thing. It was just like really nice to feel totally surrounded and loved from like all edges. So people, surround yourself with good people. Um, that's definitely a top tip. And with the distraction thing, keep busy. I mean, I handed in two papers last week for my university that I had to catch up on from because I was having brain surgery, but I caught up and I'm on chemo, so big deal. Just live your life as normally as you can. I mean, keep yourself busy. Don't stop going to work unless you really have to. It's scientifically proven, according to my oncologist, that the chemotherapy performs better when you are motivated and working hard and feeling positive so lean on people that's what they're there for don't feel guilty it brings you closer as well I invited some of my old school friends all we did was sit on my couch and watch movies together but it was such a great bonding experience and people are so happy to help you because people love you though so people will come out of the woodwork that you really didn't think so it's a really great opportunity for people to show you that they care and so let them you know, it means a lot to them too. So then that kind of ties in nicely. That then we're gonna talk about communication. Where people forget, people look at me and they think I'm fine. And then they expect me to perform to a caliber as everybody else. And I'm the one that has to remind them like, oh yeah, I you know, like I'm on chemo, I probably shouldn't. They're like, oh shit, yeah, I forgot. Um, you definitely have to communicate how you're feeling. There was one day where I was feeling really crap and I snapchatted like, feeling like shit, chemo kicking me in the butt. Two weeks later, I had like 
three different care packages from all of my good friends from all around the world who had sent me face masks, like cute little mugs, like funny books. Books are great things to have while you're on chemo because sometimes your eyes hurt from watching TV shows and you need to take a break. <laughs> Too much Netflix. But I'm so glad that I did that. I'm so glad that I told people, oh my God, I'm feeling crap. Um, so that way I could be cheered up by then. If I had kept it all into myself and was like, oh, no one wants to hear about my misery, then I wouldn't have I had the conclusion that I did, which was feeling better. So, um, don't be shy. And the other thing is, it's important that you try and explain to those that are around you and those that are taking care of you exactly what you need. Because right now, the thought of coconut makes me want to throw up. Tomorrow, the thought of soy milk will probably make me want to throw up. And no one's going to know that but you. And so you have to communicate. So I think that's a really great point. That's good. That communication is also actually less for you and sort of more for... Well, I mean, it does affect you in the end, but... It's more for those around you. Mm. So don't forget, because I often forgot. And then major TLC. I think this is a really big one. Yoga! You have to stretch your body and you have to move your body and you have to exercise. People are gonna be telling you, doctors are gonna be telling you, take it easy. Don't. Do. Do take it easy. But don't, in the sense that this is a really hard drug, if you couldn't already tell. And the more you move your body, the more it flushes out of your system. And um, so push yourself to the best that you can. So for me, at the end of this day, I'm gonna do my usual walk down the driveway and back up again. And it's gonna kill me, it's gonna be hard. My muscles are gonna ache so hard, I'm gonna be panting. But it's so important that I do it and I'm gonna be feeling better. Yeah, so then major TLC, face masks. I did like a different face mask a day. Uh, I went to go get my eyebrows done, had them plucked nicely. Honestly, pull all of the stops. Um, you know, watch that TV show you really want to watch. I rewatched Legally Blonde and Clueless and The Breakfast Club and was going through like a super girly, like, yeah, fun, feel good films. Live your life. This isn't a time to stop. Um, and it's possible. Ding, 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 ding. Exhibit A. Next is the ganja my CBD oil getting high helps so much I went to a house party two nights ago and had to take the chemo at the party I couldn't drink like all my friends were you know playing beer pong instead of uh, you know chugging beer or whatever I could have my CBD and get high <laughs> and getting high has a lot of benefits first and foremost it takes away the pain do you know how pain is like sharp takes away the sharpness it dulls it and that's really helpful when you're trying to battle your way through it sometimes I take painkillers but I try my best not to most of the time I don't take any painkillers because um, I'd rather not like overload my body but getting high is like natural CBD oil is natural you don't have to smoke it so it's not like on your throat it's just like a drops it works really quickly and you get a really nice buzz so I was really stoned the whole house party and by the end of it, I came home late at night and I was hungry because I had the munchies, which I hadn't eaten all freaking day because I was so nauseous. So really hats off to weed. It really, 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 really helps. Um, and this is medically approved, really works for me. I would, uh, if you're into it, I would definitely ask your doctors if there's any legal kush. Okay, my last thing is psychology. You can try my method tested and approved which is pretend it's kind of not happening and just live your life normally I I really felt like that helped my psyche that helped me through this um, every time I felt myself going down that rabbit hole of like you know why me this is horrible blah 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 um, I kind of like let the thought in but then thoughts are like buses going around in a circle and you're at the bus stop and although the bus may come around in front of you it doesn't mean you have to get on it you can sit there and watch it patiently pass by and do that, you know, because the more you focus on positive things, the better you will perform your body physically. Your mind connects to your body. And so if you're in a bad headspace, you're not going to perform as well. And we need you in tip top shape so you can get better. So keep fighting. Um, cut yourself a break. <laughs> this will be very hard for if you're anyone that's like me. I'm running at 1,000 miles per hour 24-7 because that's how I like to roll. But um, definitely cut it back a lot or else 
you'll slow down your healing process and that's not what we want so that's a threat that i always say to myself whenever i feel i'm pushing myself too hard i'll be like hold on we don't want to be doing this for longer than we need to take a chill pill and uh yeah so find an outlet like this for example you know sharing this with you guys this is a great outlet for me today i've done nothing with my day because i felt so rubbish um and i haven't been able to eat anything but you know at least i've produced this you know chemo's not what it used to be like in the older days i'm up i'm still living i'm still moving i can take the drugs here at home i don't have to go to the hospital you may have to go in for infusion that's different it's different for everybody but it's there to try and save your life <laughs> it's saving my life <laughs> so i have to be grateful to chemo <laughs> for what it's doing um and uh that was the last thing i had written down was it's not that bad these bodies are incredible magical insane things yeah it's just it's not that bad don't be scared it'll be over okay so i hope that helped you guys um uh, please feel free to write to me or comment and ask me questions and if you prefer to do it privately you can send me a message um but i really i feel you <laughs> I'm still going through it. I've got six more months to go. Um, it's definitely more of a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, but I know I'm going to get through it. And if I know I'm going to get through it, then I know you can get through it. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I hope any of those helped.